Hello once again, wrestling fans, and welcome to Off the Top Rope Radio, heard worldwide on KQCK radio stations. I'm your host, Brian Shank, and in the next hour, we'll discuss all that is professional wrestling. You'll hear the latest news, informative interviews with the biggest stars in the business, and maybe even a few surprises along the way. It all starts right now on KQCK radio stations, USA and Costa Rica. And we're back once again here on Off the Top Rope Radio. How you doing, everybody? Welcome to the program right here on good old KQCK radio stations. Heard exclusively worldwide on KQCK.com. My name is Brian Shank. I'm the host of the program. Like always, we do thank you for making us a part of your wonderful Thursday, July 10th, 2014 evening. And, well, yeah, it should be evening because anywhere it is right now, unless you're over in Hawaii, which you are lucky if you are, aloha, then uh, we appreciate you making us a part of your evening. So anyway, we got a great show for you this afternoon, this evening, this beautiful day that we have outside. I am looking forward to having a great show because we're going to be talking to my buddy Dougie Fresh here from WrestlingRumors.net in a moment or two, Mr. Doug McDonald. And also around the half hour mark, we're going to be speaking with Mr. X-Pac, Sean Waltman, member of DX at one time. Well, it probably still is. I mean, I don't think you ever are not a member of DX unless you're booted out of the camp, but I know that's not the case. He's going to be part of the big Click Jab Wrestling Fan Fest coming up here next weekend, the 19th and the 20th of July in Phoenix and Tucson, respectively. We'll have more information on that when we do the interview with Sean. And uh, we're just going to be having a good time today. There's a lot of things to talk about in the world of professional wrestling. I can't wait to get going into those right now. Some good news, some bad news, some sad news, all that stuff right here on Off the Top Rope Radio. And we do appreciate you checking us out today. So spread the word to all the wrestling fans out there that you know that we're on every single Thursday evening right here on KQCK radio stations here out of Santan Valley, Arizona. You can always catch us on kqck.com. You can click listen now, watch now, all that stuff. We're there at your disposal. So anyway, let's get things going right away here. Welcome my good friend, Mr. Doug McDonald, Senior Editor of WrestlingRumors.net. Always a great place to get all the latest news and professional wrestling. What's up, Dougie? What's going on, brother? Hey, not much, man. Uh, Just enjoying this beautiful day out here. It's still warm and... um, but, you know, we're having a good time. At least the air conditioner got fixed in here. That's a good thing. God. That's a very good thing. <sighs> yeah, you said there's sad news. What sad news? Is well, there? to me, the sad news is after reading some of the updated information about Daniel Bryan may no longer be on the uh, wrestling juncture here for the rest of the year. Uh, it turns out the neck problems look more serious than what they are. Most likely going to have yeah. to have another surgery. And I say it's sad because that's obviously the reason. And number two, I mean, think about it. Just a few months ago... The biggest thing in professional wrestling at the time, he was way over everybody, had a great triple threat match at WrestleMania 30 in New Orleans, looked like he was going to be a good champion for a good year run or so, and then, bam, the neck injury came, and he's been out. And I want to ask you a question. Was this injury, and I've had some people asking this, and I'm not totally sure on the answer, but was this injury totally after WrestleMania, or was this nagging him prior to that match? Oh, he, he's been, I mean, there's been nagging issues for a while. If mm-hmm. you remember uh, a match in late late summer, early fall of last year mm-hmm. with uh, Brian and Orton, yes. um, Brian comes off the top with a missile drop kick, and for the rest of the match, he's, he's fiddling around with his hand. Referee keeps trying to get him to squeeze his hand, test the strength in his arm. I do remember that. Uh, yeah, so you know that they were doing that for a while, and Triple H actually had the ref call the match. Mm-hmm. And uh, also, one of the times that one of the only times that Brian ever lost it backstage, he mm-hmm. and Triple H got heated at each other almost immediately as soon as he stepped backstage. Right, right. Um, and it was one of those times too. He, the same kind of thing. He was losing strength in that arm. And that's so scary. That's scary stuff. It, it's been a neck injury. Uh, you know, and, and now it looks like it's he's going to need shoulder surgery as well. I mean, it is it is sad. It's sad news because you know he's worked his butt off mm-hmm. uh, to be where he was as champion, uh, and now you know possibly have to stay. And, and, and no one knows how critical this 
this end is going to be if, if the surgeries are going to do what they need to do mm-hmm. so that he can get back in the ring. I mean, this is all up in the air at this point. So, yeah, it's, it's a sad day. Uh, yeah. It's going to start It's going to start changing the way people do things in the ring, I believe. Well, I hope so. You know, you go back in history, and you say that about a lot of people who've had neck injuries, such as Buff Bagwell, for that matter. I mean, Chris Benoit, you know, all the injuries he's had, self-inflicted, I think, for the most part, doing that diving headbutt off the top rope, you know, which led to other problems, which we all are very aware about and whatnot. But, I mean, you know, you got to think about it. Professional wrestling, obviously, is a very hard business to be in when you're an active wrestler. And that's why I like to say that, well, you know what? You can't fake gravity, and a lot of times gravity is your enemy in wrestling. I mean, when you're coming off of a top rope, you know, 12 feet up in the air onto the pavement or even, you know, how many feet up in the air onto the actual mat. I mean, you know, those mats aren't full of cushy water, you know what I mean? They're pretty strong. There's a small, yeah, there's a small thin piece of mat underneath there. Mostly it's all plywood and, and wood. I mean, I, I used to help put the, the rings together back in the day at some, you know, local independent promotions I was associated with. And, you know, yeah. I, I wouldn't want to be a wrestler. I, I, I see what these guys go through. <laughs> No, I'm serious. I mean, you know, when I was younger, it's like, yeah, I want to be the world champion, baby. Yeah, I want to do this. You know, like Chris Jericho on the edge and everybody else. But you know what? The right. thing is, is that I would not want to even try to emulate or duplicate what these fine athletes do inside the ring. And Daniel Bryan, you talk about someone who's worked his ass off to get where he is prior to winning the championship and then afterwards. I mean, some really bad luck for him. Like we mentioned, his father passing away, uh, him having to be sitting back on the shelf. And I can guarantee you, knowing the athlete and the competitor that Daniel Bryan is, Bryan Danielson, that he is obviously not taking this well at all. He wants to compete. Oh, definitely. And I've taken some bumps in the ring. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's not what it's all cracked up to be. I no, mean, God no. people just think it's so easy. No. Uh-uh. Uh, it, it takes a lot of it takes a lot of discipline. It takes a lot of uh, athleticism, and, and it definitely hurts. It's, oh, yeah. not, <laughs> it, it's not a cushy mattress. I'll no. tell you that right now. People that think that it is, it's no. not. It hurts. That's why Edge isn't wrestling anymore either. I mean, you know what happened to his neck and everything else, and it's just, I mean, and, you know, the biggest one, Kurt Angle wrestled with a broken freaking neck. You know, so, I mean, that's obviously uh, something. So, we'll see what happens with Daniel. Obviously, we'll have some reports here as the months go by. Definitely want to keep him in the forefront and uh, keep him going up there because he's a hell of a nice guy. and He's someone who really worked hard to get where he should be, and that is of the heavyweight championship. I want to go to a different news story here because I just want to kind of jump around today and and, uh, just kind of pick your brain. But, you know, I read some really weird crap here about something involving Natalia Neidhart. Um in- yeah. An insane lawsuit filed <laughs> and then dropped against her. Uh, let me read this here off of your website from WrestlingRumors.net okay. so people can get an idea what it is, and I want to get your opinions, obviously. It says here, the right. Wrestling Newsletter, uh, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, that is, has provided some insight to an insane lawsuit that was filed against Diva Natalia recently. The lawsuit, which has been dismissed by and a... Fl- WWE. And a WWE, that's correct, yes. It was dismissed by a Florida judge for multiple reasons. It says that uh, the WWE and Natalia had the lawsuit filed against them by a man named Christopher Donnelly, who is currently in prison in Pennsylvania. <laughs> he fi- I know it gets better. He filed the lawsuit on June 27th representing himself. It says that right. the note was... His stuff was even self-written by his own hands. It says Donnelly was asking for $250,000. That's a quarter of a million dollars, ladies and gentlemen, uh, in damages. His claims are bizarre, to say the least. Donnelly claims that Neidhart is a dominatrix who has beaten him on numerous occasions. He states that between 2005 and 2009, that he and Neidhart would get together at hotels all throughout the U.S., and she sexually abused him, and he had even forced him to <laughs> prostitute himself. He says that he claims Natalia would scream things such as, This is my dungeon, bitch! Uh, it says Neidhart has tra- like the way I say bitch. Uh, Neidhart has traveled with her husband T.J. Wilson, better known as Tyson Kidd, pretty much her entire career in the WWE. The suit was thrown out of court on July seventh, just a couple days ago, due to insufficient evidence and apparent mental issues extorted by the plaintiff. Uh, you know what? I don't know why he'd be getting upset about it because if she was doing that to me, I'd just be like, hey, you know what? We had our fun. Time to move on and serve my uh, debt to society. Crazy news story, man. Crazy. I mean, you can't. Sometimes you just can't make this stuff up. No, this ain't made up. Hey, you know, but sometimes you just can't. This is real. This literally happened. Um, the Florida judge literally tossed this out yeah. uh, this week uh, on, on Monday. Crazy. Uh, because this guy's crazy, and he has no evidence to, 
to say that she did these things. I mean, it, it, it's really, he was just trying to get damages and trying to get money from the company. And he, I, I honestly just think that he picked a strong diva. Mm-hmm. But if, if I was going to pick a random diva to do that, I would pick Tamina. She would pass more uh, as an abuser than <laughs> Natalia. <laughs> and you know, Tamina could get Tamina could use the rub. You know, she could be put over by that. So uh, that'd be pretty funny. Now, here's some other interesting news. Talk about weird. Anytime you mention Vince Russo, I think there's obviously a, a sense of weirdness. Um, he's attempted to make peace with Jim Cornette, uh, as you pretty much know. Everybody in the wrestling world who has some sort of idea that uh, Jim Cornette and Vince Russo just don't really like each other. Uh, they butted heads on the booking yeah, committee. Cornette. Hate oh yeah, Vince Russo. Yeah, with a, with a passion, like wishes he yeah. was dead. Uh, passion. Yeah, yeah. it also s- alluded to that on Twitter today that he was that Vince Russo was dead. Yeah. Well, it says here on his Twitter account, Vince Russo said, "I'd love to make peace with Jim Cornette, but I can't do that alone. Maybe one day he will open up." And then uh, Jimmy Cornette had something to say here and says, "Please keep your fans at the kids' table. They're bleeding over into my adults' conversation." <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of adult conversations, why don't we have uh, one so we can end this foolishness? Life is too short, Jim, from Vince Russo. And it goes back and forth. He says, Jim Cornette son- said, some people's lives are not short enough. So, yeah. Right. You know, it was the fact that Russo was living, and that's okay. Yeah. Crazy stuff, man. I mean, you know, okay, Vince Russo, yeah, he's been kind of controversial in his, in his past and whatnot. But, you know... I guess maybe in, in everybody's life, maybe we get to a point where we're like, you know, I what I did was pretty bad and I was pretty stupid. It's time to kind of bury the hatchet. And some people don't want to do that. I mean, I have a grudge in my life that I know I will never, ever, ever uh, make better. I just know that. And one of these days, you and I can talk about it off the air. But, uh, you know, I know that. And, and I think that maybe this is where uh, Jim Cornette goes into. So this is kind of funny stuff. Right. And see, I'm on the opposite end. I'm like Russo, where I just, I don't, I feel like life's too short. It's time to end things like that. Yeah. I can't, I don't, I don't like, I don't even like, like, moving around, like, it's like having life with, with, with beef that I haven't squashed mm-hmm. out there. Mm-hmm. I have to resolve. Whether that means I have to punch someone in the face to move on, I, I, then that's what I'll do. But I, dude, I just have to end. I can't have, like, long standing beef. I have to settle it. Hey Doug, you're a little. Bit- I, have fought, I have fought Russo for trying, and yeah. some people are going to applaud Cornette for not for not giving in and you know going off his uh, you know against his word that he's never going to patch things up with Russo. I mean, it, it's a back and forth story, but I myself, my opinion, I applaud Russo for for trying. Yeah, what the hell? You might as well. You got nothing to lose, I guess. We're talking to Doug McDonald here, my buddy Dougie Fresh from WrestlingRumors.net. He is the senior editor of this fine website. Go check it out. Make it part of your Facebook thing here because it's always good to get these awesome uh, blurbs and uh, breaking news stories. There's no doubt about that. And if you got anything that you want to send into them, obviously they welcome that. So please feel free to do that right on their website. Right. There's a little thing there you can click on, and hey, boom, goes the dynamite, so to speak. Um, Kurt Angle, he's in the news here. Now, there's been a couple reports a few weeks ago that supposedly he was, quote-unquote, passed out on a plane. <laughs> now, I, you know, I'm going to say this. I'll play devil's advocate here and say, you know what? There's been times where I was on a plane and I was so friggin' dead tired that I literally just felt like I passed out and I was tired. And Correct. they supposedly had pictures of this and they were trying to start some stuff and stir the shit pot and everything else. And, you know, I don't know how good that is or, or how legitimate that is. Um, there's even talk about Kurt Angle telling a lot of people that as of September 21, he's no longer an employee of TNA Wrestling and he would like to finish his career most likely where he started in the WWE. But then again, there's been a report that they offered him another contract. He's not sure if he wants to take it. First of all, Doug, what do you think he'll do? And number two, what do you think he should do? Uh, okay, he told Raw. I listened to the Raw's report this past week to hear Angle's whole deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he, uh, he did say that TNA offered him a new contract. He has refused it. Right. And he wants to weigh his options. Right. Um, because he feels like his next run is going to be this last. Uh, he has said in multiple reports over the last three years that he wants to finish in WWE if WWE will have him. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I know at, at a recent fan fest, I mean, it was probably it was either in it was just like late 
2013 or early 2014, he had some reports come in from guys that were at a fan fest that Angle was at, and, and Angle was literally saying, look out for me in September mm-hmm. to debut for WWE. I think he was obviously saying, my contract's up in September, which now we know is over September 21st. Right. Um, so one of those things where he's expressed his desire to go back to WWE. Mm-hmm. He's going to be a WWE Hall of Famer. Go back in your career where you started. That, that, that would be what I would want to do. Uh, you know, saying that I need to weigh my options might be his way of trying to get a filler out there and, and see if WWE's going to want him back. Um, you would think he would know by now. Uh, so it's one of those things where maybe he's just saying that on JR's podcast just to, you know, prolong the inevitable and not give a lot of stuff away. But, you know, because he's probably still under contract with Nate, can't say where he's going. Sure. Um, you know, it's one of those things where it is what it is. If he shows up in WWE, I wouldn't be surprised. If he re-signs with TNA, I would kind of be more surprised. Yeah, I would be too. You know, and the thing was that a lot of people said, well, he was with TNA back in the day because they were more, and this is what I read and what I've heard. I'm not saying this is the truth or whatever else. I'm not even going to try to speculate, but this is what I've read and have passed rumors on, as we say, is that, uh, you know, the reason why he went to TNA because it was less stringent and less strict on any kind of recreational use of various substances or liquids and whatnot, and he was able to kind of ride under the radar, so to speak. But also what he mentioned here in that thing with the Ross Report, too is that he has also been a year sober and clean which if that is the case I applaud the man I think it's tremendous because you know I'll say something to you uh, that is not easy to do especially if you are um, someone oh, that's that's for you right there Kurt Angle very nice all right and uh, I, I think that that's something that uh, you should definitely uh, look upon as a very excellent feat in your life. So hopefully that is the case because someone like Kurt Angle, who has had like five, six DUIs, it's on record. Uh, right. you know, we, we do make mistakes in life, and sometimes it's right. too late to correct those mistakes. But in this case, if he has been a year sober and he's trying to follow through, I do wish him the best in that. I think that's great. I would say sobriety is a magical thing if you can hold on to it. You got that right. It's, it's not easy. It gives That's you your life back. It really does. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I totally agree on that. Um, okay, I got some other news stories here and what not to talk about, but is there anything you want to jump into in regards to Raw or anything else going on in the wrestling world? Well, you know how you, know how you are with, with Sting news. You haven't hit on the, on the Sting teaser. Well, I was going to leave that to you, but okay, let's just say it this way. <laughs> Seven fourteen fourteen. also the Honky Tonk Man yeah. and Sid Vicious have also echoed those statements on their Twitter accounts. Now, Well, okay, well, here, here's the thing. Mm-hmm. It, it could be Sid Vicious. Nobody knows for sure. Mm-hmm. He has denied that he has an official Twitter account to Matt Hardy. But for some, I mean, but for some reason, even, even other wrestlers... Mm-hmm. Hello? Doug, you still there? Hello, Doug? Doug, I think we lost you, man. Okay, well, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to call Doug back here real quick and see if we can get him through. Doug, are you there? Okay, we're going to try one more thing here. Well, that's kind of odd. We never had that happen before. So uh, let's see uh, let's if we can get him back up here one more time. And... Um... <laughs> You gotta love live radio, man. There's no doubt about it. Let's try this. Okay, let's see. We're calling Doug here, and the phone is ringing. And Doug, 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 Doug. And let's try this. Doug, are you there? <laughs> All right. Let's hold on a minute. Let's try this. Doug, you there? Yeah, I don't know what just happened. It, it, it said I was still talking. I was, I was still talking. Then all of a sudden, I just realized that I wasn't. I didn't hear anything anymore in my ear. Yeah, we said something. We were talking about you. All I heard from you the last minute when you said he doesn't have a Twitter account or a Facebook account or whatever it was, and you said in other wrestlers, and that's where you died right there. So. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, okay. So uh, he has denied that that's his actual Twitter account. Mm-hmm. But it may be. So we'll see what happens. 
there. What do you think it means? Now, there's been a lot of reports about WrestleMania 15, 2K15, but then, you know, it seemed like a couple weeks ago that Triple H and Stephanie McMahon kind of killed any kind of rumors other than that John Cena would be on the cover of that. I just don't think that that makes a lot of sense to me. However, it could be maybe him coming in and making an appearance on TV to talk about a new DVD he's got coming up or something. Mm. You know what I mean? I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of rumors out there. There's a lot of things being speculated. I don't really know for sure what I can make or break out of this. What, what's, what's your opinions? What's your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, it's all speculation until Monday. Um, but for me, if Honky Tonk Man, which it is Honky Tonk Man's official um, deal, mm-hmm. uh, it, 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 with Honky Tonk Man doing the same deal, putting the 71414 on his Twitter, and knowing that Sting is, is going to be part of WWE 2K15. Like, that's just, that, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a you know, confirmation. Like, we know that's happening. Jim Ross actually let that slip on Stone Cold's podcast. Um, he's going to have Sting on soon. And he's been talking to him about a bunch of different things, asking him if he's ever going to come to WWE. WWE ask him about the, the myth of an Undertaker match. And, you know, then he was like, and he's part of that new WWE 2K15 game coming out. So that's fun. Um, so we know he's going to be part of the game. We know that a company had hired an orchestra to paint their face like Sting. Right. And I'm playing their instruments for a commercial. There was a body double. Um, I, it just all it all screams WWE 2K4, uh, 2K15 for me. Yeah. It all screams a video game. It all screams that there's going to be a commercial that's going to unveil either the, you know how there's, there's, we had the Attitude Era mode and then we had the 30 Years WrestleMania mode. Mm-hmm. Right. I don't know what the mode's going to be, but I, I feel like it's going to be a commercial for Sting being the pre-order character um, and, and then they maybe, maybe they announce on the same day, maybe they announce the first set of DLC Legends or or something where where Honky Tonk Man is involved, it, you know, you can't roll out fits. It may be involved. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, right now, that one's up in the air. We do know Honky Tonk Man is being for real, yeah. and uh, Jim Ross even retweeted Honky Tonk Man. Well, uh, here and Sting, Go ahead. Sting himself, uh, you know, changed his picture to a, a blackened picture of his face. Yeah. Which, to me, it, it, it all feels like what happened with Ultimate Warrior last year. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Teasery is a building up for this thing. I, I think it's all video game related. Now, to say that, I wouldn't rule out um, at some point being Sting in a WWE ring this year, not wrestling per se, but just making an appearance. There's a Sting DVD coming out. There's the uh, Great American Bash DVD collection coming out. There's a lot of stuff for Sting to be able to do for the company and be inducted to the Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. I, I fully expect to see Sting at some point in the company, uh, and and the first step to seeing that would be uh, his involvement in this video game. And I really think that that's what we're going to get Monday. There's got to be some sort of appearance, I think, on Raw involving him in some way, shape, or form. I just think that this uh, makes... I, I still think it'll just be a commercial. Yeah, it could be a commercial, but I just, I don't know. I, I think the time is right to go ahead and do something like this. I mean, you know, there's just so many things that just are making sense for me. I mean, this is like the first time in many, many months that there's even been any kind of speculation or thought about him posting anything or being any kind of relevancy towards wrestling. I mean, there hasn't been really anything else, you know, talked about or whatever on his accounts and everything else. And this, this, let's just put it this way. Maybe not that it's going to happen, but I would like to see it happen. I would like to see Sting right. on WWE. W- to see Sting on WWE TV would be groundbreaking and one of those holy shit moments. You know what I'm saying? Right. I, you got to know I mean, Ric Flair will be on Raw Monday. Woo! The nature of sure. And he's going to be in Arizona uh, the next weekend right here uh, for wrestling. Right, yeah, yeah. Click jab, baby. So I would, I would love to see Flair and Sting on WWE TV. I Woo. just don't think it's going to happen. I think it's going to be a commercial. You know what, though? How cool would that be, though? I mean, you know, you saw Brett the Hitman Hart getting interrupted by Damien Sandow or Brett the Hitman Hart being interrupted by Brett the Hitman Hart. How would you have to see maybe Sting get interrupted by Ric Flair? Woo! Boy, that would be that'd be great. I would I would love that to see be, that. Well, see, see, what if, okay, well, if you're going to do the whole Damien Sandow thing, <laughs> what if Damien Sandow came out just to Sting first and yeah. just trolled the audience and, yeah. and made everybody super pissed off? And then the real Sting came out. Or better yet, 
what if Damian Sandow came out during the Ric Flair segment dressed up like Ric Flair? It, would, it wouldn't be as good as Mr. Sean Waltman's Ric Flair. I'll tell you that right now. Oh. <laughs> what? That's one of the most notorious impressions ever, uh, which you can tell him that I said, you know, I w- if Sandow comes out as Flair, uh. it's, it's never going to touch Waltman as Flair. It'll never, it'll never beat that. I was watching uh, that the other day, as a matter of fact, just because we were, I was, you know, preparing for uh, the interview with him here in a little bit, and uh, just when uh, he was when he was doing the fake nose and putting the hand up yeah. by his eyes, the tears, <laughs> you know, and uh, and I watched the uh, the wrestling roundtable about all the heat seekers and everything else in the business that they did with uh, Michael Hayes and Jerry Lawler, Mick Foley, Eric Bischoff, and Jim Ross, and you know how they said that that was you know, something that Bischoff, you know, felt bad about doing because it really kind of tarnished the retirement speech of of Arn Anderson. But, you know, Arn Anderson got a little revenge a few years later when he was working in the situ- situation of WWE when uh, we saw Eric Bischoff take a big stink face from um, Dick Johnson. So uh, tit, for, tit, for tat, tit for tat in the wrestling business, I do believe. So, yeah, I'm going to bring that up because – yeah. Potatoes yeah. and receipts. You got that right. Well, we got a few more minutes here to talk about some stuff. Uh, is there anything in particular you want to discuss from Raw at all in terms of what happened or anything that kind of caught your eye? I mean, Brett the Hitman Hart returned, uh, knocked down Damian Sandow the next week on the SmackDown tapings, put him in the sharpshooter with Chris Jericho uh, egging him on and stuff like that. I mean, uh, uh, you know. Yeah, it was, it was, it was Sandow being uh, Shawn Michael dressed up like Shawn Michael. Yes. Um, yes. One of the biggest things for me, though, honestly, coming off of Raw is. Roman Reigns is about to be, God, one of the biggest stars ever. Um, and, and, and to get, I honestly see a WrestleMania main event between Reigns and Cena happening, possibly at, at WrestleMania 32, where Cena finally hands the torch off, much like, you know, poking the warrior. We may see Cena passing the torch to, to Reigns. Reigns is, is nothing but, he's being built as this big ass kicker who, is a monster mm-hmm. and is tough and he has attitude to him and you know it, just watching his presence on Monday made me go okay yeah this guy's about to be the next big thing Wrestlemania 32 is 21 months away and it's yep. it's, it's scary to think that but, you know it goes quickly especially in the wrestling business but I mean a long term goal like that with someone like Roman Reigns um I yeah, and and who's to say that John Cena will still be champion at that time? I mean, there's so many things that could come and go on this. And I'll tell you another thing too is that I'm really enjoying that they're continuing on the Rockers feud as we brought up a couple weeks ago between Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. I, I like yeah. I like that they're continuing on with that. It's just a um, it's refreshing because it could have been something like one week got his revenge and then boom he moves on to somebody else. They're keeping it going right. and, and and I like that. There's some continuity to the whole thing. I enjoy that. Yeah, I mean, we could see pay-per-view matches between these guys for the next three pay-per-views. Yeah. I mean, this is going to be a long feud. This yep. is not going to be a short thing. And I love the fact that we're getting some long-term booking here. And, uh, and we're, we're, we, i, I got to jump in on this because if I don't, I'll forget. I'm now happy and glad that I was wrong that they said that I said they turned the wrong guy with Seth Rollins. They turned the absolute perfect opportune guy uh-huh. to let Dean Ambrose be the one chasing him as the baby face. Much better, well thought out. Dean Ambrose being the smaller one, kind of like the, you know, the heel of Shawn Michaels type of guy, whatever else, having a bigger guy come at him and stuff like that, ruining his chance to win the championship on Raw with the money in the bank cash in. It just it's it's good TV, it's good entertainment. I like it a lot. Yeah, I love it too. I really think that we're going to get that up until, I mean, they may put the briefcase on the line mm-hmm. uh, at SummerSlam or Night of Champions, but we're going to get Ambrose ruining Rollins catching mm-hmm. the next two months at least. Yep, yep. That's for sure. Well, you know what? We're, we're at that time now. we got to, unfortunately, move on here, but we're going to have a great interview with Mr. Sean Walton, Mr. X-Pac himself from Degeneration X, right. and I'll pass on that information. I know you're going to listen to the show, obviously listen to the interview, but um, I just invite everybody, if they have an email or something you want me to read, to Sean Waltman, Mr. X-Pac. It's right there up on the screen if you're watching us, Brian, B-R-I-A-N, at kqckradio.com. You can send us an email. I'll be happy to read it over the air to Mr. Sean Waltman as well. He's going to be here in a, in a about a week and a half for the big click jab wrestling fan fest so that should be fun and i know that you're going to be wearing the six six ball t-shirt right now that you have autographed i'm sure in uh in retrospect oh, i got it right here buddy nice nice okay well i'm gonna tell I'm him you got it. 
You are a click guy, that's damn sure. So we're talking to Doug McDonald right here, senior editor of WrestlingRumors.net. Go to it, like it, read it, enjoy it, get it on your Facebook, get it on your Twitter, get it everywhere. Just go to it and like it. It's the best thing going today as if I had a Ric Flair imitator right here. Woo! It's the best thing going today. So I just elbow drop my jacket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Slam it down the ground. I like it. All right, Doug, we're going to fly, man. You take care. We'll talk to you next week. And uh, I'm going to give you a call probably in the next couple of days because next week you may be uh, possibly, if um, you know Frank wants to join you, I may have you guys just take over the show for me. I have a prior engagement that I really don't know if I can get out of. So we'll talk more about that. Maybe you guys can have your own little show for an hour or so. Sounds good. All right. I'll, I'll, talk to you later on. I'll be in touch, buddy. Thanks again. All right, there you go. Doug McDonald, WrestlingRumors.net. Go check it out. If you want some great wrestling information each and every time you click on your computer, that is definitely the place to go. We're coming back in a few minutes here. Sean Waltman, D-Generation X. Are you having plumbing or septic problems? No worries. Call Cartwright's Queen Creek Plumbing and Septic Service. Been in the Valley since 1996. Family owned and operated. Proudly serving East Valley and surrounding areas. With a full range of services from drain cleaning, septic tank pumping, general maintenance and repairs, inspections for the sale of your home. They provide excellent and courteous service for all your plumbing and septic needs. We're not satisfied till you are satisfied. Licensed, bonded, and insured. Call today. Cartwright's. Queen Creek Plumbing and Septic Service. Contact Denise at 480-987-8051. That's 480-987-8051. Got pain? Call Dr. Wayne. Hey, Sean Bryan. Care may be your answer. Queen Creek Back Care. Located in Queen Creek on 20231 East Ocotillo Road on the back side of True Value Hardware Store. Safe, effective treatment with chiropractic and same-day appointments to speed your healing. With more than a decade of experience and hundreds of satisfied patients, Dr. Wayne Christensen will provide you the pain relief you've been searching for. Dr. Wayne is fully qualified to treat the entire family, even children. Call for an appointment today. 480-677-3900. That's 480-677-3900. Fantan Motorsports, located in Queen Creek, specializes in off-road ATVs, dirt bikes, UTVs, side-by-sides, street bikes, and provides performance work. Santan Motorsports is your local dealership for off-road parts and accessories. They provide and pride themselves on excellent customer service and a staff that understands all aspects of the off-road business. Come in and browse our dealership and find those parts and accessories you've been looking for. Check our website, SantanMotorsports.com, for monthly specials as well as used equipment. Santan Motorsports, your one-stop shop for sales, service, and knowledgeable staff. Located in Queen Creek on Power Road and Santan Boulevard. Or call 480-988-0580. Santan Motorsports. We're here for you. Yeah, you don't have to live like a refugee, but you definitely have to live like a click member if you have this gentleman on the air. He's definitely someone who's been controversial in his wrestling career, but albeit definitely entertaining. He's been loved. He's been hated. He's right now here on Off the Top Rope Radio on good old KQCK. Heard exclusively worldwide on KQCK.com. Off the Top Rope Radio and Brian Shank are proud to present Mr. Sean Waltman, X-Pac. How you doing, bud? Great, man. Thank you for having me. Oh, hey, it's a pleasure right here, man. It's the first time we've had you on the air, and uh, I look forward to talking with you. I mean, there's so much to discuss in your career and whatnot. And first of all, tell me what Sean Waltman's doing nowadays. What have you been up to? Man, I'm busier than ever. Yeah. I, well, not ever, because, I mean, we were going so hard at one point, mm-hmm. like 300 days a year right. plus. But, uh, I mean, relatively speaking, I mean, I'm probably busier now than I have been in probably, I don't know, 10 years. Wow, that's great. Uh, it, it, yeah, I mean, I'm working every week. Uh, it's damn near full time. Uh, so, 
and and that's that's without being like on TV full time and since 2002. So, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I'm really blessed, man. That's good, man. Really that's, blessed. That's, that's good. That's good because you know, obviously, a lot of the guys and stuff they say, well, you know, I'm doing this and I'm doing that, blah 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 blah. But it's nice to be busy. It kind of keeps you from being so bored and whatever else. And I know one thing that's going to keep you busy is next weekend right here in Arizona on the 19th in Phoenix and on the 20th in Tucson, yeah. Arizona. Click jab wrestling, baby. We had some of the guys in here uh, a couple weeks ago, Chris and uh, Mike and everybody. And I tell you what, this is going to be one hell of an event, man. There's so many of the boys that are going to be here. Especially Especially your two traveling what a buddies. Stacked lineup, huh? How, how about it, huh? Gotta like it. Yeah, man. I was just checking out their website, um, clickjabwrestling.com, and uh, nice plug. You know, we got Goldberg's gonna be there, mm-hmm. Flair, Ric Flair, Woo! Uh, Edge, uh, my personal favorite, Brett the Hitman Hart. Yeah. Uh, Zeus, Tiny Lifter's gonna be there. You know, Debo from uh, from Friday. Yep. Oh yeah. Uh, and you know, myself and the rest of the Wolf Pack, Kevin Nash and Scott Hall. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, our lead is gonna be there. God, I could just keep on going and going. Well, let me do that uh, for you here because we've got them all in, in front of my screen here. Robbie E from TNA Wrestling is gonna be there. Candice Michelle, Maria Canellas, Brooke Adams, Taryn Terrell. She's one of my favorites. Lisa Marie Varone. I mean, <laughs> you talk about the ladies on here. Angelina Love, former TNA Knockouts champion. There, there's not gonna be a shortage of ladies at this event, Sean. And I know you're never unhappy about that. No, yeah, of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> I like all I like all kinds of ladies, and uh, we're going to have all kinds there. But you got that. You know, right. honestly, man, the the, the real the, what I'm really looking forward to more than anything is meeting the people. Yeah, the, that's like the the most rewarding thing nice. uh, in my life at at the moment is uh, you know going to all these appearances and, and meeting the people and getting you know getting to have a more intimate uh, you know experience w- with each other. It's 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 a it's a really really uh really cool uh setup you know that's right the, 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 the thing that we're going to have on the 19th and, and 20th right. um it's going to be at the marriott i guess right yeah, right on yeah as a matter of fact for, uh, for saturday's event on the 19th in phoenix it's going to be at the marriott airport 1101 north 44th street and in uh tucson on the 20th it'll be at the double tree reed park 445 south alvernon you got to get on here guys click jab wrestling.com if you go to that website it's nicely made it's easy to read it's easy to get your tickets there's faqs on there if you have any questions at all or whatever else you can check out all the packages they're selling and you know i think even when we had chris and mike in here they're like you know what they under they underpriced themselves he says you know there's definitely some great values here to meet all the greats of uh the nwo and the and the attitude era and the wolf pack and the nwa and i mean there's so many people here who just are really a big mainstay and a staple in professional wrestling so this is a great thing to go to man yeah yeah and 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 these things are getting really popular uh mm-hmm. You know, it kind of got real popular on the East Coast mm-hmm. in Jersey and uh, New York and, you know, and all that area. But, uh, man, they're getting really popular all over the country now. Oh, and yeah. uh, and, it's, and it's really great. And, and, it, and it's given a lot of older uh, wrestlers, uh, you know, uh, another, you know, platform that they can, you know, they can meet their, you know, their fans. And, and you know, it gives them another... Uh, you know, another outlet for, for income, mm-hmm. too, you know, sure, which sure. is always a good thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely. You know, I talked to uh, William Regal um, in the WWE back in 2010. I says, you know, what's what's your favorite thing to be doing out here and stuff like that? He says, you know, honestly, the best thing I like doing is this right here. And he was at WWE Access, where you sign autographs and meet yeah. the people and take pictures. He says, you know, in our, in our careers and whatnot, we're traveling so much, like you mentioned a moment ago in the interview, you know, 300 days a year and whatnot. It's hard to actually sit down and talk to the fans and take pictures and open up you're on the go so much sometimes you're tired sometimes you're hungry sometimes your plane's leaving you got to get moving and everything else this gives you a time to sit back reminisce and really listen to the fans and that's one thing i've noticed about sean waltman is that when he's at a live event i've seen it firsthand you love talking to the fans and you love discussing your career and everything else that uh, happened in professional wrestling during your time well, here's the thing, man. My, my, the most important thing to me is that when somebody comes and they beat me, that they leave happy. And, uh, you know, it, it's such, it's such an incredible, uh, thing to be able to write your name on a picture or a piece of paper, a pose for a picture.
concert with somebody right. and make them that happy, you know? Right. It's an incredible thing, man. Absolutely. Uh, honestly, man, I, I, if it wasn't for the fact that, uh, you, know, it, you know, it costs so much to bring us all in there, um, I would be doing this for nothing. Honestly, man, because because uh, I just I love the people that much, and it's not a, it's no BS. Mm-hmm. It's not. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm being one hundred percent honest. How do you feel when people come up to you? And I know they do because I'm pretty sure you were you were such a heel back in the day that I think a lot of people just didn't like you as a heel. And I think that was a magical thing because let's think about it, Sean. When the NWO Isn't came, that what it's in that, yeah. in that my job though. Like, I, I mean, I wasn't trying to win a popularity contest at that point. I know, but here's my point: because you have the cool uh-huh. heels, you have the cool heels who are out there doing things, a la Kevin Nash, a la Scott Hall, who were the cool heels who were cheered. You and people like even Buff Bagwell, for that matter, in, in my opinion, you guys were booed as legit heels because you're, you're right, you were doing your job, and and I totally agree with that. Yeah. You did it well. You did it very well. I appreciate that because uh, you know, I mean, you know, people would say say certain things, and uh, you know, I don't pay much mind to it anymore. But at one time, it kind of bothered me, you know, uh, because just and you know, here's the thing too, Brian. Um, most people, when they meet me, they go, man, I thought you were going to be an a-hole, you know? Uh, <laughs> seriously, every, like, nine, nine out of ten people say that. Yeah. I so, um, you know, and I understand that, you know? Uh, but, um, you know, it's not the case when people meet me, they kind of change their mind. Oh, sure. Uh, Anyways. And you're getting older every year like any one of us. As a matter of fact, I believe in about three days, you click another year off on your age there, don't you? Oh, yeah, it's 13th, yeah. yeah. July 13th, almost forgot. Yeah. I'll be 42. Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. finally breaking into the 40s, huh? <laughs> Didn't think I was going to make it for a while. Though. Yeah, I think a lot of us have said that in our past. Like, I never thought I'd live past 35 or 40, but my God. But, you know, another thing I want to ask you, too, I mean, and you've gone on record. I've seen other interviews and whatnot. And, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, wrestling fans, if you're just tuning in here to Off the Top Rope Radio, here on, exclusively on KQCK.com, we are speaking to Sean Walton and Mr. X-Pac himself from DX. Um you know, back in the day, there was recreational use of drugs. There was things, and you were never a stranger about it. You were never one that denied it and stuff like that. But I hear a lot of people yeah. now in the business who are cleaning up. Kurt Angle has gone on record by saying it's been a year now. He's been clean and sober, and it's something he had to do because his life was literally going down the toilet. How is Sean Waltman doing? Because, like you said, you never were a stranger by saying, you know, I did quite a bit of partying back in the day. Yeah, I did a lot. Of, I did a lot of stuff. I- a lot of really incredibly self-destructive behavior, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and I and I yeah, I've been really open about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm glad to be able to tell you that the thing, you know, thing of the past. Good, you know, um, my life is great right now, man. Um, Excellent. Uh, I'm not going to go and tell you that I'm a twelve-step uh, AA <laughs> definition of sobriety teetotaler. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, sure. Um, but you know, I don't do anything that's harmful to my body. Let's Good. put it that way. Good. Good. Well, that's great news because I know that a lot of people are having issues still to this day and whatnot. And and for you to be able to sit here and say, "Hey, I'm turning 42 in three days," uh, it's nice to be at that yeah. level in your life that you know there's been a time where it needs to come and, and clean up and stuff like that. So I applaud you, man. That that's great. I'm I'm happy for you. You know, I got to thank Vince McMahon and WWE for that and their wellness policy, man. And, oh, really? You know, people like to you know, blame Vince or, you know, you know, pass judgment on him for a lot of things. But, and, and you know, a, a bit of that's rightfully so. But mm-hmm. at the same time, I think they should recognize him for the good things he's done for, for uh, you know, the people that work for him, you know. Right and, on. Uh, right on. He didn't have to do that. Right. I mean, it's good PR, but, like, it's cost him millions and millions of dollars. Oh, sure. To, you know, try and, Try and get everybody healthy. Well, so, I, I, I think and it that, worked for me, man. It worked for me. Well, and you know the thing is that if you can save one life in, in your in your situation, I mean, you pretty much said it. You know, your life was saved for a lot of reasons. There, I mean, if that's the case, a million dollars, you know, what is that? It's nothing. Obviously, it's something you want to do to better somebody's life who has given blood, yeah. blood, sweat, and tears like you have for all those years, man. So good for you. Good for you. I'm yeah, right. Vince stepped up for me way before there was even a wellness policy in mm-hmm. place like that. Yeah. So, I mean, they've always been there for me, regardless of any kind of policy in place. That's cool. So, you know, I'm going to be a little bit biased towards them. 
Good. I'm just going to be honest with you about it. <laughs> That's good to hear, man. You know, too many people are throwing knives nowadays, and it's kind of nice and refreshing to have something like that. And, you know, I was watching on the WWE Network. I, I couldn't help but to click around and play around on that the other day. And there was the one that they had. It was a roundtable discussion with Jim Ross, Jerry Lawler, Michael P.S. Hayes, Eric Bischoff, and uh, Mick Foley. And they were talking about the heat seekers in this business. And a heat seeker, obviously, (laughs) you know, the ones who may not have a lot of bad things against them, but maybe someone who wanted to be in the spotlight and somebody who had negative press and everything else like that. And Eric Bischoff, obviously, was somebody on his own list uh, with the other people in the panel. And they talked about it. And Michael Hayes was very vocal by saying, the one thing that I didn't like is when you guys made light of Arn Anderson's retirement speech on Nitro. They thought right. it was, yeah. And, and I got to admit, and, and, you know, I loved Arn Anderson. I loved the Four Horsemen back in the day. I grew up watching them. I've always respected them. I love Me J.J. Dillon. Yeah, and I know you are. You're a fan, too. Um, but was there any kind of remorse or any kind of people backstage including yourself and the boys that were upset doing that skit or was it hey this is business this is what we're supposed to do only 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 because feelings ended up getting hurt yeah um you know and i never would have guessed that that would have hurt you know that would have really gotten to those guys like that honest to god because if the if the same thing would have been done to me i would have been like hey that was great yeah yeah. You know, but I'm that type of guy that never took myself oh so serious like that in sure. the first place. Sure, sure. You know, and I'm not, down, I'm not, you know, when I'm down to that because you have to take yourself serious to, you know, or nobody else is going to. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it, you know, it's like somebody, when they say somebody's a mark for themselves, I don't think that's altogether a bad thing. Yeah. You know, from sure. a promoter standpoint, I want guys that are somewhat marks for themselves. Because if you're not a fan of yourself, why should anybody else be? But that being said, man, I just thought, like, wow, man, I can't believe that it got that, you know. Uh, and, you know, I should have I should have really, known, though, no, no. yeah. honestly, man. Uh, and, and I do regret the fact that Arn was so uh, hurt by it. Mm-hmm. I don't think Rick had anything to be upset about. Like, I mean, I was just doing him, like, making a cartoon. You know, I gotta admit, Sean. Entire parody of him, but uh, <laughs> but you know, I can understand why Arn might have been a little bit out of shape because you know we were making fun of him and he didn't have a chance to retort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. so we were getting heat on him, and it was like we were getting heat on somebody that can't make a you know comeback. Yeah, well, it didn't I make a lot of sense, but we did parlay that into you know that war games main event yeah. so it did it was effective man oh yeah huge I'll come up for air now <laughs> yeah, yeah come up for air I, I thought it was great because the way that you portrayed rick with the with the putty nose and and you know mean gene standing there with the microphone saying this is disgusting You're like yeah whatever gene get out of here woo and you kept doing the woo i was dying laughing and then with the crying where you must have had some kind of tube or something there in your in your wrist and you just kept squeezing it and tears yeah. were, i mean that just I was bawling, dying, laughing when that was on. I literally just was cracking up. And then, you know, the other thing was, you know, when he came out as, as Arn Anderson with the cooler under his arm, and he's like, you know, it's too old. It's, my hand's too weak to open up a beer can. You know, I mean, it just. It was Arn's cooler. It was legitimately Arn's cooler. Was like it real? Of his car. Oh. I didn't know that. That's what I'm trying to say, man. It wasn't like we were, like, making things up. <laughs> I had no idea. That's funny, yeah. man. Oh, God. And they were laughing when we came back, but, like, I mean, I don't know. It was weird. Yeah. And, and I do feel really bad because I'm a huge, you know, I have tons of respect for those guys. Even though Rick Nates will sit and bury the hell out of us on every chance he gets. Yeah. Total sour grapes. Total sour grapes. They were dead on their ass. WCW was dead on their ass. They had mm. nobody that was over or drawn anything. Right. Until the NWO thing came. All the baby faces were dead ass in the water, mm-hmm. and that's a mm-hmm. fact. It is. And yeah. that NWO thing had to go in there and run over everybody and destroy everything yeah. and rebuild it from the ground up. And that's a fact, too. Do you think the NWO got too big with its members? Because that was the one thing I thought just sure. was. Yeah. Did you, I mean, did you ever voice an opinion on it? Like, hey, you know, why do we need Conan in here, for instance? Or why do we need so and so? I mean. I, can, I understand strategically why certain guys were put in there, but yeah, it got ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. 
Ridiculous, man. Yeah. I mean, sorry, Virgil. Come on, man. <laughs> don't you mean? Don't you mean Vince? <laughs> yeah, whatever. Right? Like, and that's another thing. You know, they were trying to take shots at Vince while we were there. Right. I don't know if you ever realize this, but Kevin Scott and I, we would never take shots at Vince on the. On the uh, WCW television. Mm -hmm. Well, and you know, the other guy who Uh, did never do that either was Bobby the Brain Heenan. He never said anything about Vince McMahon on his telecast, which I thought was very classy. Very classy. And I think you knew... None of us wanted to leave. No, I know. None of us wanted to leave. Yeah. Was it just basically... We we told you we had to, man. Well, was it... it, And and let's just put it in perspective here, and let's just be honest. It was the money, right? I mean, how can you turn down a a guaranteed amount of money like that? Exactly. I mean... Exactly. Especially if, if you knew what... What I made the previous year, I worked full time for like three hundred days. It was ridiculously low. Do you want to? I, t- I mean, I couldn't. I couldn't even break even sometimes. Do you want to say the difference between the last year in the WWE compared to what oh, you? I, like I made double immediately as soon as really? I got there. Wow, that is hard to turn down. Yeah. If not impossible to turn yeah. down. Wow. Incredible. We're talking to Sean Waltman right here on Off the Top Rope Radio. Brian Shank hanging with you here on KQCK.com. Heard worldwide, baby. We got people all over the planet that listen to us, Sean. We got about 80,000 listeners per week. We keep growing. Costa Rica, we have an affiliate down there. We got people out in Chile and Ireland and England and Canada and Mexico and everywhere else in the States that listen to us. I know they're enjoying this interview, and as am I, uh, conducting it with you. I mean, you're a hell of a great guy to talk about this stuff and everything else. Um, I want to ask you, though, what was... What was the difference between working in the WWE, like maybe the locker room and, and the camaraderie and stuff like that, compared to going to WCW? Was it a small fish in a big pond compared to a big fish in a small pond? I mean, what was your biggest differences, in your opinion? Um, the immediate difference was the lack of any kind of structural organization. <laughs> WCW. It was absolute. It was like just sort of a miracle every week that TV actually started like on time to go live <laughs> because it would be like 45 minutes prior to going live, and all of a sudden the run sheet would be scrapped and and the, it would be rewritten wow. the whole freaking show, you know, wow. uh, things like that. Wow. Um, and I just think. If not for the incredible talent that was there at the time, it would it would have never came together because yeah. of the lack of organization and and like I said, structure. I've heard that it was insanely chaotic behind the scenes. I've heard that from other people. Yeah, um, you know, I know that Phoenix, Arizona, is kind of a staple in your life, and I'll maybe just ask you if you can kind of guess where I'm going with this. Um, it happens to go back when you were the Lightning Kid, and uh, you yeah. had a yeah tryout match. Yeah, Phoenix in Tucson. Yes, yes. Phoenix in Tucson. As a matter of fact, that's like with the nineteenth and twentieth is like me reliving my my two tryouts for uh, when I uh, the day after WrestleMania nine. See, I did my homework, Sean. Um, I did my homework. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I did too. As soon as I saw the, the two uh, shows were in Phoenix and Tucson, immediately that that's what it brought to my mind, and nice. it was my. Tryout matches with Luis Piccoli, may he rest in peace. Yes. That God secured bless. my job. Yeah. Now, you know, when you came into the WWE, you were not known as the Lightning Kid. You were the one, two, three kid. Um, was that something automatically that was said, okay, you know, you're not going to be the Lightning Kid anymore. You're going to be this. And I know, yeah. it's, I know it's due to marketing and stuff like that and ownership and everything else, but did it bother you at all that you had to be now the one, two, three kid or anything like that? Yeah, I hated it. Really? I thought it was the stupidest bubble gum candy ass name like <laughs> that they could have put on me. But right now it's kind of you know it's kind of grown on me a little bit. But yeah. back then I was embarrassed to tell people my name when they asked. That's funny. Well, you you, you had a yeah. Different, no, I couldn't stand it. You have you have a bunch of different you know gimmicks and characters you've had over the years, and I bet you that when you go to these fan fests and meet people, I'm sure people bring up all kinds of different pictures to you all the time. I'm sure to sign them as different people. Does that ever get confusing for you sometimes? <laughs> no, because like you know, some people will come up to me and say, "Will you sign at six? I'm like, "I never signed at six. I never had a six autograph. Really? Really? Like honestly. No, so uh, like I'd make, I like I'd do my X Pac when I throw a six on there or something because like seriously I never really had one. Hmm. So uh, hmm. 
But I mean, I, I don't know if that's really kind of boring information to be talking about during my interview. So I, <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I just thought it was kind of funny because there's, there's so many names here that you had. I think you beat out Bruce Beefcake. Yeah, for, for I was mornings. always the same persona though. Like sure. for, for the most, part, I was always it was always just me with a different, you know, name. Right. Right. So, you know, even when I switch from being a heel to a baby face, like. It was just me tapping into the inner a hole. Yeah, you know. Yeah. When I was being healed. How did it so, feel? How did it feel when you got the big upset victory over Scott Hall on Raw that time? I mean, that really elevated your career right there. I think in a lot of ways. Yeah, it was really overwhelming. Uh, just, I, you know, even just the phone call I got from Vince McMahon several weeks after my tryout when they ran the whole angle storyline by, uh, by me mm-hmm. and then Vince asked me how it sounded to me like what was I supposed to say yeah. <laughs> you know besides you, you just changed my life forever sure sure you know so I mean it was an ama- just I was on cloud nine just already yeah I bet did you ever you collect know, before I even did it and then afterwards when it worked so good um it just I mean I, I knew it worked better than they thought it was going to work, to be honest with you. Yeah. Oh, it was a huge pop, man. We're talking like Rock and Roll Express winning the titles back in 85 and Charlotte uh, pop. I mean, if you remember that type of thing, it was huge like that. I mean, you know, you, you could just compare some of the things back in the day. And by the way, did you ever get the $10,000 from Razor Ramon that he put up for that? Uh, I'm just curious. I When I returned to Darnie School and he said there was like, you know, two thousand dollars missing or something like that. But I think he was just ripping me. You know, like, seriously. That's awesome. Arnie was a Arnie was a he was a, a funny guy like that. Yeah. I, that's a may he rest in peace as well. Too many guys are gone now. Oh, I know. I know. Uh, but Arnie was, you know, uh, he was Bruno's manager. He was Bob Backlund's manager. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, and just a really incredibly. Uh, respected amongst the boys when he was around. So Arnold Skolin, yeah, it was remember. really cool to be around a guy like that. Remember when he threw in the white towel for Bob Backlund against the Iron Sheik when he lost the title, and uh, that was a big kind of storyline. You know, he threw in the towel, and you know he didn't want to see Bob Backlund yeah. get hurt and everything. That was crazy stuff, man. Right, I yeah. remember that being a big deal. Like, and, and I actually had like sympathy for for Backlund over the whole deal. Yeah. Oh yeah. I remember that, man. That was crazy. Good stuff. But I, you know, looking back on it now, you go, well, "Gee, I wonder why Bob took it so serious, like, and <laughs> didn't drop, and just tap out or something." But I guess, like, like I said, it goes back to me saying it's not a bad thing to take yourself so serious. Sure. No, I, I don't think so. I mean, if you did, then you know you're not going to much of a life. Um, who? That's now- why Bret Hart's one of the greatest of all time. Oh yeah. He was just on Raw here the other night. Hey, I got I to gotta ask you a question. I know we're getting kind of tight on time here, but uh, between between the uh, the click members, you know, Hall, Nash, Triple H, and Shawn Michaels, who have you always been the closest to? Wow, that's really hard to say, man, because, you know, the thing is, is like, for, for a good amount of time there, we were split up, and part of us were in WCW, and, you know, part of us were, you know, there. And then Sean was gone for several years. Mm-hmm. So, um, man, I was really close with everybody. Yeah. Seri- like, and that's not just me trying to ride the fence. Because, I mean, and to this day I am. And of the, the, the one guy that I talked to the least is Sean. And that's just because he has, he's got his own life completely going on, you know? Sure, sure. But that doesn't mean we don't love each other the same. Right, right. Yeah, that, I've got but people man, here. I, that's the truth, Brian. I honestly, I'm... Equally as tight with all the rest of the guys. That's awesome. You know, I got about four guys back home in Illinois where I was brought uh, brought up and born and raised. That if at any time whatsoever, when I go back to visit my dad, we hook up. It's like there's no favoritism at all. It's just that we all have a common bond, and we were kind of like the click yeah. before the click was cool. I guess you could say, you know? but that's how it is. Yeah. I, I I totally under, I totally understand what you're saying, brother, and that, and that's a good thing. So listen, I know we got to get going here, but I know we got a few more minutes. But I want to play five quick questions with Sean. I'm just going to read you five quick okay. questions one at a time, and I just want the first thing that comes off the top of your head, okay? Yeah. Here we go. If I, Sean Waltman, could spend 10 minutes with anybody alive or dead and have a conversation with them for 10 minutes, that person would be? One one person? Yeah. Yeah. 
Wow. Oh, because I have two guys in mind, but like I'm just gonna go with Bruce Lee then. Oh, 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 oh boy. But my but, but like I've answered that before, and it's a tie almost between Elvis and Bruce Lee. Nice. Well, you know what? If you have Bruce Lee, you might have to have two to have a translator. So. Um... That's very possible. Oh, come on. He was good. He was no. good here. Come on. No, he was great. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and you know what? Elvis Presley, that's that's one that a lot of the boys have, have mentioned in the past when I played this game with them. But I like I like Bruce Lee. Would you let him uh, show you how to do push-ups on his thumbs like that? Could you do those? I can do them, yeah. Seriously? Can. You can do push yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to see you in Phoenix and Tucson. I'm going to be there for both days. I want to. If you wouldn't mind maybe doing one or two push-ups on your thumbs, I'd like to see I, you. I'll do some Superman push-ups. I'll do whatever kind of push-ups you want. Nice, dude. I'm looking forward to that because that was some crazy shit that Bruce Lee used to do. You have to throw me a peanut or something. <laughs> I got some uh, cashews. We'll do that. That's awesome. I like that. That's great. That's a great answer. I like Bruce Lee. Very good answer, Sean. Um, there's one person that I wish I could have wrestled, even if it was 50, 60 years ago. Who would that person have been? Did you say fifty or sixty years it, ago? It, it can, not necessarily. It can go, you know, it can go five years before mm. you started, whatever. It can go as far back as the beginning of time. I teamed, I teamed with him at Survivor Series in '93, but I never got a chance to wrestle Randy Savage. Mm, I like that a lot. Yeah, huh? Mm-hmm. The Macho Man. He was a dear friend, but we never had a chance to actually wrestle. Wow, you know, and you guys were both. So freaking fast in the ring. That would have been a hell of a matchup, man. You never wrestled yeah, Randy. Would. Wow, you never it wrestled. It would have been great. I would have, that would have been a real honor. It was an honor just to be in the same ring with him at Survivor Series. Yeah. Oh, boy, I'll tell you what. I've got something. I, 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 sometimes I go surfing on eBay and I look at things and whatever else. And I know a lot of the signatures and stuff like that from the boys back in the day. They all have you know pretty you know special signatures the way they sign some. And somebody was selling a neon green WWF shirt, and it had like some kind of rainbow colors, you know, like kind of a weird color, like a girl shirt or something. But it was signed uh-huh. signed by like Ted DiBiase. It was signed by Jake the Snake Roberts. It was signed by Brett the Hitman Hart. And the biggest one right on the back in the middle, Randy Macho Man Savage. And it was signed Macho Man Randy Savage with that little twirly kind of thing he does at the end with his name. I saw yeah. that, and I compared it with some other things that people had, and I bought that shirt for 20 bucks on eBay. I was just blown away. Nice, I said, man. I got to have that, man. I got to have that. So I thought that was pretty damn cool. So I love the Macho Man. He's he's my favorite, without a doubt. So that's cool. He's right up there, man. That's oh. for sure. What an incredible, uh, just what an amazing persona he projected, huh? It's yes. Incredible, man. You know, he really changed, I think, the face of wrestling in the mid-'80s like that because he was so over the top. Plus, he had Elizabeth, which was always a great thing, and he just could wrestle as well as he could talk, and he could back up a lot of his stuff. I mean, he'd go in there and just, whether he's a heel or a face, he was great. I preferred him as a heel, especially when he had the IC Championship, yeah. but he was just tremendous either way. I, pay, I paid attention to him, and I emulated some of his mannerisms and the way he was, how... He was very animated, and even if he wasn't the one in the middle of the ring talking, he was so animated and stuff like in the end rings yeah. that uh, you couldn't help but look at, but look at him. So even though I wasn't talking, I always tried to be like Notch and you know, you know, demand attention anyway. So. <laughs> well, I like he that. He's incredible. Yeah, but. I love Macho Man. He was cool as hell. Okay. Um, question number three here out of five: If I was going to the electric chair and they gave me one last meal. I would have. Oh, man. I guess I wouldn't have to worry about my weight. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's why it's such a great Still, question. Man, honest to God, man, I think I get the most pleasure eating sushi these days. You know, I had a lot of people say that too, sushi. They just eat it until they passed out or something, right? Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. You, you get like a natural, well, I do. I'm not going to speak for others. I get like a natural high from eating sushi. I've heard that. When I leave the sushi restaurant, I feel high. I've heard that. I've heard that. Yeah, it's crazy. That's good, and it's, and it's a natural high, and it's a legitimate legal high. So that's good. I like I like that answer. Very good. <laughs> yeah. Lots of sushi for Sean, please. Okay, uh, number four here on my list. To me, the most underrated wrestler that I think ever wrestled inside the ring and never really got the break he deserved would be. Oh, there might like be some guys that are more famous that you can. Um that I could come up with, but the first name that popped into my head when you said that was Jerry Lynn. 
Jerry Lynn, and great there might answer. Be some people that that are listening that don't even know who he is, and that's that's a shame. Oh, he's great, Mr. JL Jerry Lynn, one of the greatest underrated. I that, that's a great answer, and you know, that's the first thing that came to your head, which I appreciate because you talk about talent. This guy has it. I've always said my answer to this has always been Brad Armstrong. I just thought that Brad yeah. was tremendous. You know, so. That's great. Did yeah. you know? You like know, I said there could be several guys a person can think of, and they wouldn't necessarily be wrong. So, oh sure, sure. Who are some other guys you had on your list in your head there besides Jerry Lynn? Well, Brad is up there. Yeah. Um, wow. Man, I don't know. There's just so many guys, man. Yeah. Like so many unsung heroes. Yeah, there are. Too many to name. <laughs> you know, Bobby Eaton and oh. Bobby Eaton and Dennis Condry. You know, yeah. as far as tag teams. Love them. And I, I know they're critically acclaimed within the, you know, industry, but, like, I wonder what the mainstream fans, you know, what their opinion is of those guys. Because, like, really, Bobby Eaton, greatest tag team wrestler of all time. I put Bobby Eaton not only as the greatest tag team wrestler, in my opinion, I agree with you totally, Sean, but I've always put Bobby Eaton just as himself, as Bobby Eaton, as himself, one of the top 10 wrestlers in my book of all time. And I told him that, and he just was like, because I, I know Bobby personally, and I got a chance to see him again in, in Mid-South back in uh, April in New Orleans, and he just like smiled and turned red, and I says, Bobby, I'm telling you, if anybody wanted to learn how to become a professional wrestler with psychology and movements and, and fluidity in the ring, I says, pop in an old Midnight Express tape. Pop in a tape when you went singles back in 91 in WCW. You're fantastic, dude. Yeah. That's all there's to It's a natural yeah, talent. Yeah, he was on the... He was on the Super Juniors tour uh, uh, tournament tour uh, with me in Japan, New Japan, in '93. Mm-hmm. He was there as a heavyweight, not in the tournament, but um, man, he he got it over. Oh he yeah, was well over there, man. He's cool. The, the thing about Bobby is that he's always been real shy, and yes. real bashful. Yep. So he wasn't the best talker in the world, but like. Yeah, just great, fantastic. It, it, not a great talker, but I'll tell you what: when you're with him and talking to him, he's wonderful and one of the e- easily one of the most nicest, true, genuine people you ever meet in this business. That's my opinion. Yeah, really hard to understand sometimes. Though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis Condry said the same thing. <laughs> so that's funny shit, man. All right, we got one last question for you, Sean, and we got a bolt here, and I really enjoyed this interview. Just right to on. let you know that. Okay, to me. The coolest, most awesome-looking professional wrestling championship belt was. Ooh, I'm always a fan of the old. Uh, I. That's a hard one. Man, I gotta go with the NWA, the old NWA belt. The one that Harley Race and the Terry one Funk. That Harley, Richard yeah. And best. Yeah, that. Funk and all that. That that is my answer as well. I've always said that. It's just, it's so cool. You know, the moon, the sky, that shape. It just, it was so recognizable. Yeah. You know, I love that belt. You know, a, a a real big second to me would have been the U.S. belt after Tully Blanchard had it when Magnum T.A. had it, and then the he, Magnum T.A. one. Yeah. yeah, that was sweet looking. Nice, huh? And the TV title was kind of cool as well. It was simple, but it had that red felt on the inside that Arn Anderson wore for all those years, and Tully and all that. I like that belt too. I think Crockett. I was a big fan. I was a big fan of the World Tag Team Titles that Manny Fernandez and Rick Root carried. Yes. Silver with the gold egos and yes, everything on it. Yes, those were yeah, the cool yeah. belts. Yeah, good stuff, man. You know what, Sean? I can't wait to meet you in person again. Now, you and I met uh, about maybe maybe two years ago when you were with the uh, uh, Future Stars of Wrestling here in Phoenix for those guys, and uh, right. you and I talked a little bit backstage. I did an interview with you and Kip James. Uh, yeah, with me and Billy, right? Yeah, yeah. We did an interview on camera. Yeah. I th- hopefully you remember that, and that was a lot of fun and everything. So I'm looking forward to meeting you again, shooting the shit with you, watching you do those uh, thumb push-ups. I'm going to put you up to it, and uh, I'll definitely bring a big big jar of peanuts, no problem there. Um, and uh, <laughs> I, I, really, I really, really appreciate this time. It was a great interview, and as a matter Matter of fact, I shit you not, as I'm sitting here talking to you, sometimes my program director and owner of the station will send me one of those little pop-up word pads up on the screen, and it says, yep. fantastic interview, what a great guy. And he's not the, he's not the hugest wrestling fan in the world. He he's getting there because I've educated him out the years and stuff since I go way back and everything. But to get a note like that from him saying that and saying that you're a great guy and it was a great interview, fantastic interview, that means a lot. So he definitely uh, puts. Doesn't go out to me. It does. Yeah. I've done so many bad things in my life. It means a lot when I hear something like that. <laughs> well, 
That's 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 true. I'm not bullshitting. It's right here on the screen. I just read it to you as as I was finishing up with you. You throw it up on the screen, and it's kind of scary at times. I feel like this place is haunted, but uh, now that I know it's him, it's all good. So, um, <laughs> but listen, Sean, I can't wait to see you in a couple weeks here. Actually, about a yeah, week and man. a half. Looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. We'll do an interview hopefully on camera. I'm going to be doing some stuff for uh, the uh, Click Jab Wrestling. We're going to put it on YouTube and edit it up real nice. Some good graphics and music and stuff. I look forward to doing that with you, and uh, it'll be a good time, man. Have so have a safe travel out here. Please be careful. And again, great interview, and I thank you very much for it, man. Oh, it's my pleasure, Brian. I can't wait to see you, man. Okay, you as well, buddy. Take good care. Suck it. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sean. <laughs> Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Uh, not a problem, as do I. All right, there you go. Sean Waltman checking us out here on the phone via telephone from uh, his home out there somewhere in Florida. And uh, it was always a great time talking to him. And boy, I tell you, he he's a great talker, man. And I'm really glad that he has been able to get himself in order and, and to hear him say it from his own words and his own lips and everything else. I mean, that really means a lot because you can read stuff like so-and-so is doing this and I'm doing this and I'm, but to hear him say what he did, especially all the troubles that he's had in the past, him celebrating his 42nd birthday coming up here in just a few days. uh, That means a lot. And it really meant a lot for him to be here on our show. And I really, really thank him for that. So Mr. Uh, Sean Waltman, he'll be there for click jab wrestling's fan fest. That's coming up. We already talked about it here, but just to give you a quick rundown on that, as well go to clickjabwrestling.com you can get all the information for this wonderful fan fest get to meet people like sean waltman right there kevin nash scott hall bill goldberg rick fleur adam copeland brad hart tiny lister we're talking about robbie e amy dumas candace michelle maria canellis brooke adams taryn terrell oh she's my favorite and lisa marie verone and angelina love all the greats are coming this is going to be one hell of an event again go to clickjabwrestling.com Get your tickets either for Phoenix or Tucson. Saturday is going to be in Phoenix at the Marriott Hotel there on 44th, July 19th from 1 to 5. And the Tucson one will be on Sunday from 2 to 5 at the Double Tree there on 445 South Alvernon. Been a great show, guys. We appreciate it. Y'all take care of yourselves. Special thanks to Mr. Doug McDonald from WrestlingRumors.net. Thank you to all the great fans who tuned in and listened. And thank you very much to Mr. Sean Waltman, X-Pac himself, for a fantastic and wonderful interview. We got to get out of We'll talk to you next time right here on Off the Top Rope Radio. We'll be back next week on July 17th. And everybody, please have yourself a great week and be safe. Take good care. We'll see you at the matches.